Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are checking out not one, not two, not three, but four RX 7900 GRE partner cards with three from Sapphire and one from Gigabyte. If you saw my launch day review at the end of February where we checked out the AMD reference design, it's safe to say I wasn't blown away. So can AMD's partners improve things with their custom models? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out in today's video. Just to give you a quick rundown of the four models I have for review today, in alphabetical order, we first have the Gigabyte Gaming OC, and this sports a triple fan cooler with dual BIOS and a reasonably aggressive factory overclock. Then we have the Sapphire Nitro Plus with a triple slot cooler that looks as good as ever, along with dual BIOS and plentiful RGB lighting. The Sapphire Pure model is the first time we've looked at an all-white pure card from Sapphire, and rounding out the show we have the Sapphire Pulse, with the Pulse family proving to be a dependable, wallet-friendly option over the last few years. In the first part of this video then, we're going to go over all four cards in detail so you get a good idea of their designs before moving on to our thermal, noise level and game benchmark data later on in the video. Kicking off then with the Gigabyte Gaming OC, the design will be instantly familiar if you've seen any of our other Gaming OC reviews this generation. The shroud is almost entirely black with just a couple of grey accents, while it also features some circuit board style traces and other design elements just to add some visual interest. It's sporting a triple fan setup as well, part of Gigabyte's Windforce cooling solution, with each fan measuring in at 90mm. In terms of the dimensions of the card, the Gaming OC measures 302 by 130 by 56 millimeters, so it's fairly long and almost a triple slot thickness, while it weighed in at 1,321 grams on my scales. The front side of the card is home to a glossy plastic section, with the Gigabyte logo housed within it, acting as the only RGB zone on the card, and you can configure this using the Gigabyte Control Center software. We also get a full length grey metal backplate with just a tiny flow through cutout at the end. A BIOS switch is also located to the left of the two power inputs and this offers a choice of the OC or silent modes. Both of these modes offer identical clock speed and power targets, the only difference is the fan curve but we do test both later in this video. We can also note two 8 pin power connectors as expected, though for display outputs we have two DisplayPort 2.1 and two HDMI 2.1. Moving on then to the Sapphire Nitro Plus, and again, this is using the same design as the other Nitro Plus cars we've reviewed this GPU generation. That is a very good thing though, as I honestly think this is up there as one of the very best looking GPU designs on the market right now, thanks to the clean grey shroud and the subtle curves. We again get a triple fan setup using Sapphire's angular velocity blade design, notable for their very sharp and angular appearance, while each fan measures in approximately 100mm in diameter. In terms of dimensions of the whole card, the Nitro Plus measures 320 by 134.9 by 61.6 millimeters, so it is well over 30 centimeters in length, and it's over a triple slot thickness. It also weighed in at 1600 grams on my scales, making it the heaviest of the four cards today. We also get a good look at the ARGB light bar running the length of the card, with the Sapphire logo on the backplate another of the RGB zones, while there's even an onboard ARGB header so you can synchronise the lighting with your motherboard if that is your preference. As for the backplate, this is made from metal and runs the length of the card but with a relatively large cutout towards the end to allow air to pass through the heatsink. We can also note the dual BIOS switch positioned near the IO bracket and this offers a choice of the OC or silent modes as well as a third setting so you can toggle between those two modes using the Trick software. We even find a 4 pin fan header at the very end of the PCB so you can connect a fan direct to the graphics card. Then we also find two power connectors as expected while display outputs again consist of two HDMI 2.1 and two DisplayPort 2.1. If you're looking for a new chair then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out boolies.co.uk. 
The next card on our list is the Sapphire Pulse, a model that will be instantly familiar to a lot of our viewers given how many times we have checked out these cards. We find the usual black plastic shroud with a few red accents which tie in with the Pulse colour scheme. We can also note the triple fan cooler again using Sapphire's angular velocity fan blades with each fan measuring in at just under 100mm in diameter. The Pulse of course isn't quite as large as the Nitro Plus, measuring 320 by 128.8 by 52.6mm and it weighed in at 1105 grams on my scales. The side of the card is home to the Radeon and Sapphire logos, again coloured red, though do note there's no LEDs or dual BIOS on this card. We can also note the full length metal backplate with the Pulse branding and an ECG printed in red, which is a staple of the Pulse series throughout the years. As expected, power is still delivered by two 8-pin connectors and we get the same allocation as the Nitro Plus in terms of the display ports with two HDMI 2.1 and two DisplayPort 2.1. Lastly then, we also have the Sapphire Pure and this is actually the first time we've looked at a card from this particular series. It did become quickly apparent, however, that the core design is the same as the Pulse, but of course with the new white color scheme and there are also some gray accents as well. This means we get the same triple fan cooler using the same angular velocity fan blades but this time in white and again each fan measures in just under 100mm in diameter. Dimensions are also identical to the Pulse measuring 320 by 128.8 by 52.6mm and it weighed in at 1116 grams on my scales. The side of the card is again home to the Radeon and Sapphire logos with the Sapphire logo finished with a red accent. This time, however, this actually illuminates with red LEDs when powered on, but the color cannot be changed, which I do think is a shame. There is, however, a physical toggle switch to allow you to turn the LEDs off without the need for any software. We can also note the full length white metal backplate, which I personally think looks very tasteful, and you also get a few cutouts and the pure logo printed on the back. Finally, as expected, power is again delivered by two 8-pin connectors, and we also find two HDMI 2.1 and two DisplayPort 2.1 outputs, just like the Pulse. So that is it for our look at the four different cards we are going to be testing today. And speaking of testing, for this we are of course using our regular GPU test system, which is provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built on Intel's i9-3900KS CPU, paired with the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard, and we also have 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 memory. Starting off our benchmarks then with thermal performance, here we run a 30 minute stress test in Cyberpunk 2077 and record the temperatures for each card, and we do test both BIOS modes if the card supports dual BIOS. Honestly then, on first impression, the differences here aren't massive. The gaming OC did run the coolest in its out of the box configuration using the OC BIOS, though do bear in mind that these results don't take noise levels into account. The Pure and Nitro Plus when using the OC BIOS were virtually identical in terms of their thermals, and the Pulse only ran three degrees hotter. So like I said, we're really not talking massive differences. Let's move on to noise levels though to paint a more complete picture. One thing is immediately obvious then when looking at the noise level chart, Sapphire really knows how to make a quiet graphics card. The Nitro Plus using the silent BIOS for instance was so quiet that it was not audible in my test environment, hitting the noise floor of 32 decibels, which is seriously impressive. The gaming OC itself is still very easy on the ears, hitting 34 decibels with the silent BIOS and 36 decibels using the OC BIOS, but we have to say it is highly impressive just how quiet all three of Sapphire's cards are. For our noise normalized thermals then, we increase fan speed until we hit 40 decibels of noise output and rerun our thermal tests. These results honestly didn't go quite how I was expecting with the Nitro Plus running hotter than the Pulse and the Pure despite having the larger cooler. It is of course worth reminding ourselves that while we can normalize for noise, all four GPUs actually have different power targets, with the Nitro Plus pulling about an extra 40 watts, which could explain the difference. All four models tested do improve on the AMD reference design though, and I really have no concerns about any of the coolers on show today, as they were all more than capable of handling the 7900 GRE Silicon. 
Speaking of power draw then, as mentioned, the Nitro Plus does pull more power than the Pulse or the Pure, hitting 295 watts, while those two cards came in just above 260 watts. The Gigabyte Gaming OC does draw about 5 watts more than the Nitro Plus, just scraping past 300 watts power draw in my testing. As for whether that extra power draw has any effect on performance, it's time for our game benchmarks. I don't typically focus too heavily on this area in our partner card reviews as performance doesn't tend to change that much compared to the reference cards. That being said, we did see up to a 6% gain for the Nitro Plus compared to AMD's reference model, which is more than what we typically see in our AIB reviews. That is a best case scenario, however, as the Pure, Pulse and Gaming OC didn't see improvements that large. Generally, the Pulse was about a frame slower than the Pure and the Gaming OC, with the Nitro Plus being the fastest model tested, but as you can see from these results, the differences are very small. Of course, I did also try overclocking all four models, and I have to say that this is very tedious for the 7900 GRE, as AMD has really locked down the overclocking sliders. You can easily max out both the GPU and memory sliders for all four cards, the only real challenge is finding out how far you can actually undervolt each model, and in my experience, somewhere between 960 and 980 millivolts proof stable across the four models tested. With these overclocks dialed in then, all four cards managed to run at over 2600 MHz, with the Pure and the Pulse actually getting closer to 2700 MHz in my testing. The gains on offer from these overclocks aren't massive though, typically just a handful of frames at 1440p, so you could easily argue that it's not worth the hassle, and honestly undervolting to improve efficiency may be more beneficial instead. Interestingly though, power draw for the Nitro Plus and Gaming OC actually decreased when overclocked, despite the fact that I increased the power limit up to its maximum of 115% for both cards. I'm not sure if this is a bug or some strange architectural quirk, but it's not what I expected to see and isn't something I've come across with other RGNA3 cards. So then, after all of that testing, if we take these four 7900 GRE cards in isolation, they are all very competent partner cards, all of which improve on the AMD reference design in some way. All of them have great coolers, and honestly, the differences between the four in terms of thermals is really much of a muchness, though I do have to say I was particularly impressed by the Sapphire cards and just how quiet they are out of the box. Probably the main area of difference between the four comes down to the physical appearance though, with the Nitro Plus being the biggest and most resplendent with RGB, whereas the Pulse is fairly stripped back, while the Pure will of course appeal to those who want a white graphics card. The Gaming OC is also quite understated with its matte black design, but it does also offer some RGB lighting. So while I did say that these are all very competent 7900 GRE cards when taken in isolation, of course what complicates matters is that I do find it very hard to recommend this particular GPU, especially in comparison to the 4070 Super, no matter how good the partner card may be. As I pointed out in my launch day review, the 4070 Super offers very similar raster performance to the 7900 GRE, but it is significantly faster in terms of RT performance. It does of course offer support for DLSS, which I believe to be the superior upscaling technology, and it is the more efficient GPU. Unfortunately for the 7900 GRE as well, the enhanced coolers and extra features of these custom models does drive up the price. Over the last few days, for instance, I saw the Sapphire Nitro Plus model retailing for anywhere between 560 and 600 pounds, while even the Pulse model is on sale for 550 pounds at the time of filming. Considering that the 4070 Super is readily available at and even below the 579 pound MSRP, to me, the Nvidia GPU is just the stronger all round choice. To be clear, I do like what Sapphire and Gigabyte has done with their custom designs, but coming away from this review, I just can't help but feeling AMD's GPU lineup is in need of some price tweaking to make it more competitive. Anyway guys, that is where I'm going to leave this review, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to ding that notification bell so you don't miss out when we upload a new video. And why not come carry on the conversation in our Discord server with an invite link in the description below. While you're there, you can also check out our merch store. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. 
That is it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.